you type in a search term, a search query, into the search box here in the search engine, and here, pay-per-click ads that match that uh, have appeared. And also, these are ads as well, and they actually go all the way down the page here. And it's because you put in a search term that triggers that ad, so it's one of the keywords in the ad itself. Okay, so back to the presentation. So once again, you know, you saw in that demonstration that you know you put in a search query, and then advertiser's keyword comes up. So if you're a company that's selling T-shirts, um, and you selected T-shirts or buy T-shirts inside your keywords for your advertisement, uh, th this may you know when someone's searching for those specific words, the ad will appear. And advertisers are charged, you know, when a searcher clicks on one of their ads. Okay. So, um, just another quick poll. We're going to just launch it right now. It's just regarding how many of you have ever really clicked on a pay-per-click ad. Just take some time to respond to that, please. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to just uh, close the poll right now. And 62% of you said, yes, you've um, clicked on an ad before, and 38% said no. And then in terms of the previous poll, I'm being told that uh, the polls aren't showing. How many of you know what pay-per-click advertising is? 54% of you said yes, and 36% of you said no, you don't know what pay-per-click advertising is. So we're going to just go into a bit more depth. Uh, three key elements that you have to keep in mind while thinking about pay-per-click advertising is keywords, ads, and landing pages. In terms of keywords, you select your keywords and you submit it to, let's say, a company like Google that's running your ad, and uh, the keywords are pretty much the words that you want search terms that people are searching for to trigger and like you know activate your ad so that people can see it. In terms of ads, designing your ads, making them relevant not only to the keyword that you selected, but also to uh, the, the person who's searching, so that you want them to, to appeal to them, um, like any ad should, it's so that they want to click on it. So that's very important. And of course, landing pages, that's when you click on, once the searcher clicks on the ad, and they land on a certain page on your website, this is when you would convert the visitor, in the case of charities, to either uh, donate or volunteer or just support your cause of you know, the cause that your organization is championing. Uh, so that's three things that you really have to keep in mind uh, for pay-per-click advertising. Just from the advertiser's perspective, let's say they chose the keyword t-shirt, and that's what we've been sort of using as a, a running example here. Um, and they Google and many of the pay-per-click advertising uh, companies out there run their advertisement system based on a auction-based system, so there's bidding. So on the left-hand side here, you can see that uh, the, you know this person has won the top spot, Threadless.com, and they bid five dollars. They thought that that's what uh, would get them the top position, and the lowest or most, I guess, uh, what they would call the least visible ad or the cheapest ad is two dollars and fifty cents, and that's sort of at the bottom of the search result, right? And that's what they bid, what they thought that the ad was worth. Uh, but this this isn't actually what you end up paying for the ad. What you end up paying for the ad is they figure out what the, the cheapest one is, and then they work up on um, a dollar increment. So we've used 10 cents here. And so at the end of the day, the person that actually got the top spot um, actually only paid $2.80. So that's sort of uh, you know short and sweet, like how the auction system can work. But from the searcher's perspective, and this is the perspective that many of you are used to, is that you, know, you put t-shirts in to the search uh, query box here. And in the end, you know, this is the top. This is actually the top um, uh, bidder for the ad space. It's Threadless, and uh, these are the two, the second, and the third person. And then there's also a whole bunch that you know rank down the page here. 
So as you can see, the T-shirts, you know, there's there's sort of bolded words here, like it's triggered a keyword inside the advertisement itself. So you're probably asking yourself, how big is this sort of industry? And search engine marketing is actually a 13.5 billion dollar industry. It's uh, quite big in terms of online marketing. And um, okay, and uh, this is made up of you know paid advertisements such as pay-per-click advertising, uh, as well as display advertising that you see on, let's say, YouTube or banners, and also search engine optimization. That's just to give you an idea of the marketplace. Now, um, these are the three big players. Um, it's Google, Bing, Yahoo. And as you can see, the red boxes sort of highlight how similar all three advertisers are. The you know, pay-per-click ads appear consistently throughout all three search engines in sort of the same places, there's not a lot uh, different about them and they sort of run on the same mechanics of, uh, you know, enter search terms and this will match up with keywords in the advertisement and the advertisement will appear. So in terms of uh, market size though, Google makes up 80% uh, of the marketplace and they operate their business out of something called Google AdWords. And then Bing and Yahoo, Yahoo makes up 6.5% and Bing makes up 4%. <clears throat> and they run, they actually are part of the same business center and they run their ads out of something called Ad Center. Okay. Now in terms of why you should use pay-per-click advertising, you really need to consider uh, in today's world how people are looking for information. And that's mainly online and on the web. And right now, uh, the statistic is that there's three billion searches happening every single day. And as an organization like a charity, you need to ask yourself, well, how can you tap into these three billion searches per day and be able to attract or um, you know, sort of filter out the people interested in your cause or uh, who would support your cause and donate to it and uh, volunteer. So pay-per-click advertising can actually help a lot with this because it makes your organization's website uh, more visible. It makes it helps people discover your website and your organization and your digital presence essentially. Now there's, there are certain uh, you know pay-per-click advertising being a promotional tool, an online advertising tool. There's there's always marketing problems that you're trying to uh, fix like any business or uh, not-for-profit entity uh, organization, you're trying to solve certain marketing problems. And we've sort of outlined, we're going to outline three of them today that uh, you can tackle using pay-per-click advertising. So the first one is just gain general awareness for your you know, programs or services or your uh, mission. And so typical keyword terms that we've seen are like, let's say, cancer research, immigration, council, or blind sports. And we actually work with uh, a group right here called Courage Canada, um, and they support the, um, they encourage and want to promote uh, the sport of blind hockey in Canada. And so blind sports is a keyword term that works very well for them. And I'm going to just do a quick demonstration, again, on Google here. I'm going to type in blind sports. This is actually one of our charitable partners, and you can see um, you can see that his ad is right over here, this organization's ad. And I typed in blind sports and it appears, discover blind hockey, bringing Canada's national sport to blind, find out how. Right? And organically speaking, Courage Canada didn't appear like on the organic search, meaning it's you know from here down. Yeah. And you know, so these top three ads, they, they came in fourth in terms of you know, their bid for the ad space. And so they ranked fourth, one, two, three, four. And so they, their, their website, you know, you search blind sports, it didn't appear. So just by being able to use their Google grant funding and to purchase the pay-per-click advertising space, they've been able to sort of raise their um, standing in terms of searches. So just a simple search like that, you can see sort of the effectiveness. It's brought it right to the top here. 
uh, just to go back to the presentation, uh, what we found is that Courage Canada has been able to increase their site traffic by 251% within the first month of starting to use pay-per-click advertising, and that's, that's a very successful campaign right there. Um, just another example would be, you know, another marketing problem would be increasing volunteering. So, you know, people are looking for opportunities all the time to volunteer, and of course your organization are maybe looking for volunteers, and how do you sort of meet halfway, how do you connect? And so sort of some of the things that we found people are searching for are volunteer opportunities, volunteer Toronto, nonprofit experience. And how do you connect and how do you find each other? Uh, the Kirkwood Wood Theater Guild, ever since starting to use, you know, ever since they started to use pay per click advertising, they managed to increase their volunteer inquiries by 25%. And we uh, took volunteer opportunities and we just typed it in there. And you know, we put it in the box here, and you can see the top ad is actually a RedCross.ca ad. Um, and the fourth ad over here on the top column is uh, a food bank ad. Kids Day at Food Bank. So you can see sort of what they look like and what triggered them. Um, also, you can see sort of generate donations, sort of finding financial support and uh, you know, other grassroots or from corporations is always a big part of the nonprofit world. And charity donations um, is something people search for other one time or monthly uh, recurring corporate sponsorship, of course, and then and, you know, annual giving programs. And greatergood.org increased their donation totals by 90% ever since using pay-per-click advertising. And we can just sort of show you, we typed in charity donations and uh, you know, the top three ads right here. Uh, World Vision is the first one, and uh, many of you may be familiar with uh, Sick Kids Hospital here in Toronto. And over here is Direct Relief uh, charity donation gifts. And so you can see, you know, top three ads here, and then you know, they scroll down the page. So these are the three things that we think that pay-per-click advertising can really uh, solve for many charitable groups. We just wanted to get into what is Google Grants uh, before the second half of the presentation. And Google Grants is a way to make pay-per-click advertising affordable for charitable organizations. And this means uh, you use the funds that you receive from the Google grant from Google to bid on uh, pay-per-click advertising, right? It's a $10,000 per month in free pay-per-click advertising, so it's an in-kind advertising grant. It, it gives you an ad spend budget, essentially, because uh, in the for-profit world, you know, you get you get an ad and let's say it's two dollars and a hundred people click on it, right? Yeah, you know, two hundred two hundred dollars now. So. Uh, just think about if that's two hundred dollars a day and it's thirty days in the month, it can get very expensive. But with um, ten thousand dollars per month, and, you know, recurring, there's no end date. Uh, every single month, they actually give you. Let's say this is an example right here, sort of like ten thousand dollars in poker chip and sort of credit and token that you can use to buy this pay-per-click advertising to give your organization additional exposure um, on search engines. So, and it recurs, uh, as I said, and a lot of people ask themselves, well, what's the value in just getting the Google Grants? And that's, what we tend to tell people is that it, you get what you put into it. So in a, in a way, if you put a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, then there's not gonna be reaping much of a reward from it, but if you really try to maximize and uh, manage it well and maintain it, then it's possible that you can get a lot of what we've shown you in the testimonials, you know, a lot of growth in terms of traffic and converting people over to either being volunteers or donors. Um, and that, that's all within the realm of possibility. And if you're a really strong performer, you can get an additional $30,000 per month, bringing it to a total of $40,000 per month in free pay-per-click advertising from Google. And that this is, you max out your account. And so, you know, it's a great opportunity. It's, it's $10,000, upwards to $40,000 per month. Um, uh, in ad spend, and then, of course, um, it's recurring. So as long as you show active and uh, good management and maintaining it, then the grant continues uh, month after month, and you can maybe get $40,000 uh, 
for a month after that if you're a really strong performer. So right now, that's the end of my half of the presentation. If there's, uh, we'll stop right now just to field some questions. I know Simon's been uh, trying to answer some of them. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, this is Simon speaking. Thanks, Charles. Uh, I guess I'll take the uh, screen from you. Yeah, go right ahead. That. Great. Thanks. So, um, Charles is just talking about pay-per-click advertising, just giving you a background on, on what it is and how it applies to charities. What I'm going to do is actually dig into the Google Grants process from start to finish. So I'm going to talk about the application, setting up campaigns, and the eventually managing it. And in each stage, I'm going to explain what you need to do, uh, how much time you can expect to spend at that point, um, what the timing is in terms of the, the overall timeline. And then I'm just going to give some tips tips and strategies on how you can um, best go about it. So, start with the, the application process. And what you're doing here is you're, you're filling out an online application and it's basically made up of three sections. The first section is short answers. It's just basic information about the charity. There's a long answer which is just like a paragraph questions and finally there's a te technical portion which is like a sample keyword list. And uh, I'm actually going to show you what the application looks like. Um, so, you know, from what I was saying, there's here are your short answers, right? Name of organization, uh, basic like mailing address, things like that, contact information. If you go down, this is the long answer portions. And so you, you'll see these text boxes. This is where you can uh, input your, your answers. This is kind of asking you for what's your organization's mission, what do you expect to get out of Google AdWords, and who is your target audience. And finally, here is that technical portion. It's kind of like um, doing a very simplified um, pay-per-click advertising campaign. What you're going to do is you're going to put one example ad that you might run, and then like a simple list of keywords that you, you might use to advertise your organization. Pretty simple. Google is just trying to get a feel for, um, you know, how familiar you are with pay-per-click, and and you know, if they give you the grant, are you going to be able to use it effectively? So, in terms of commitment, you know, in our experience, we, we find it takes about two to four hours uh, to fill the application. It's it's not too bad. And the timeline, well, as soon as you submit that application. Um, basically, it'll take between four to six months to uh, to to get that approved. So, some tips. Um, first of all, please please carefully review the eligibility criteria. Um, it's it's happened, or we've seen this happen before, but you know charities kind of gloss over it and they apply, and after four to six months. They get rejected. They don't really understand why, and they've, they've kind of wasted a lot of time, right? So please, please review the eligibility criteria. I'm just gonna go quickly over. Um, this is you can get to this page by doing a Google search for Google Grants Canada. And uh, if you look at the guidelines, it's actually pretty explicit about um, the eligibility. Uh, basically, who isn't allowed to get a grant, and and so um, just review that at your own leisure. Now, the, uh, the next tip that I can give you is to just learn a bit about the basics of AdWords. You know, AdWords is the, uh, the arm that runs the advertising center for Google. 
And where this is really going to help you in the application is the technical portion. And so if you review just a, like very basically about it, you'll know how to write uh, a, a high impact ad and also how to build this keyword list a little bit. And especially here, there's a link, it's called Keyword Matching Demo. And if you watch that, it just gives you a bit of a background on, on different kinds of keywords that you can use. And, and that's going to help you um, when you come up with that list. Another good way in terms of how do you go about uh, generating those keywords for the keyword list is something called the uh, AdWords Keyword Tool. It's, it's a free product that Google offers. Um, uh, basically, I'll, I'll go into this in more detail later on, but uh, just know for now that uh, in order to generate keywords, you can use something called this keyword tool. And also know that uh, as I go throughout this presentation, some of the stuff that I'll talk about will actually help with the application process. So um, just the, the final tip is to really keep it simple. Um, we, we've talked with Google Grants, and what they told us is that as long as a charity is eligible for the grant, they will approve them. And so also know that this entire program is run on a volunteer basis by Google employees. So these people are going to be busy. So really just you know try and keep it simple and uh, state your case clearly why you're eligible for this grant. Okay, so you submitted the application, you've been approved. The next step is to set up a real AdWords account. In terms of a commitment, Google officially recommends between 4 to 12 hours to spend on this. Uh, in our experience, this is a pretty good estimate. You'll probably tend to be more on the high end, uh, like uh, 10, 12 hours, because, well, a lot of the time is spent uh, due to the learning curve. You know, you have to kind of understand more about pay-per-click advertising and how to use the pay-per-click advertising interface or the AdWords interface. After you completed setting up the account, you, you have to submit it again for approval because Google needs to check that you've done the right settings, that uh, you're advertising the right way, and this takes about five to eight weeks. Some tips that we can offer for you. Well, uh, review your key settings. Now, I, I'm not going to go into depth about like, what these settings are exactly because as you go through the process yourself, they're, they're pretty explicit about what these settings should be. I just want to emphasize that uh, you have to take that seriously and really um, look at it closely because, again, in our experience, we've seen people gloss over this, and what happens is it creates a lot of problems for them later on. So um, please, please check this out first. Now, the next tip is to structure your campaigns based on goals. So some of you might not be familiar with what that means or how accounts are actually structured. So let me give you a basic rundown of, of how accounts are structured. They're basically divided up into campaigns, which are the highest level of how, um, how you organize your account. Within each campaign, you're going to have a number of ad groups. And ad groups are just groups of highly related keywords. Within each ad group, you're going to have all the keywords that you want to advertise, and then a specific ad text that's going to run for the ad group. So if you're a visual person like me, it kind of helps to, to see what this actually looks like. So I'm going to open like a sample campaign I just built to, just to show people what it looks like. And this is the, the actual AdWords interface. If this is your first time, it's, it's a little overwhelming. Um, let, let me just show you the, some basic things to look for. Just along this tab, you see these things, campaigns, ad groups, you have keywords in the ads. Basically, if you remember the hierarchy of what I was showing you of how an account is structured. So below here, here are just some different campaigns that I've set up, and you see like these high-level um, settings that you can run for every campaign. If I click on this particular campaign, I'm going to go and I can see all the ad groups that are inside here. And you can see there will be highly related keywords, so like public school system and the private school system. 
And within that ad group, you see the keywords that I choose to, to advertise on. And then for this particular ad group, there's going to be an ad that runs for it. And this is just a sample ad. So that, that's basically how accounts are structured. Um, you know, I find people have a little trouble when they start out understanding the best way to structure that campaign. So my recommendation is to do it based on the goals. For charity, what this might be, could be awareness, could be volunteering, or it could be increasing donations. Now, a really simple way for charities to do this, you know, if your website is, is good enough, often your navigation will give you a lot of hints as to what your goals are. So let's look at an example here. And uh, this is called, this is People for Education. Uh, they're a charity that supports public edu education in Ontario. And if we just look at their navigation, well, let's look at the first one, see how does education work? So maybe the goal here is to promote awareness about the educational system. News that could be um, keeping people updated on the current affairs of education. We look at research, the goal here might be um, trying to spread the latest research on, on education. What can I do? Uh, maybe you want to try and get more people involved in, in education. And let's say about us, and you go to donate. Donate could be another goal that's, that your organization has. Okay, so what does this look like? Well, back to the AdWords campaign. What you see here is, cam is uh, campaigns that are actually set up upon those goals. So if you recall, education system awareness, I mean the latest news on education, education research, getting involved in education, and donating. So just a really simple way that you can start uh, structuring your campaigns. Now, when it comes to um, getting keywords or generating keywords that you're advertising on, a great place to start is analytics, especially if you use Google Analytics. Now, for those of you who don't have any kind of analytics or don't use analytics, I would highly recommend it. It's free, it's not too complicated, and there's a lot of value you can get out of it. So where do you start when you look at Google Analytics for keywords? Well, a great place is called the Keywords Report. And I'm actually going to show you a real uh, analytics report and where you would go to find this. You go along the side, the, this is just a navigation bar, traffic sources, and then you're going to hit keywords. And already you can see a number of search terms that people use to find your site. And so these are all possible keyword ideas you can use. And if you want to take this a step further, I'm actually going to take one of the keyword ideas that uh, they've listed here, and I'm going to use the Google AdWords Keywords tool that I referred to earlier in the presentation. And, and basically what this tool does is you can insert a word or a phrase or just a uh, link to your website, and it'll generate a bunch of different keywords, keyword ideas that you can use. So this is something from the analytics report. I'm going to press search. And you can see down here just like a number of um, terms that they, they found that are related to what we've just used. Not all of them will be related, but uh, you should go here and pick and choose. You know, I might uh, select a couple of these ones. And uh, also know that along the side here, it gives you an estimation of how many searches are, are run every month. So this kind of gives you an idea of what keywords make are better ideas than others because obviously you want to generate as much traffic as possible. Now another thing you can do with your analytics report is to look at the map overlay. And if we go back to um, analytics, I'm going to go to visitors this time, and we're going to click a map overlay. And this is actually going to tell you where geographically people are coming from, your visitors are coming from. So I'm going to break this down into city. Oh, I did something wrong. I meant to show Canada, but that's okay. Um, 
But uh, how you can use this, oh, here it is, Toronto, Ottawa, Mississauga. Um, how you can use this is when you build your campaign, you can actually uh, target specific geographical regions, and so this can help you with your targeting as well, just knowing where people organically come from. So you, your campaign has been approved, it's set up, it's running now. So what you're doing is you're managing your grant. Uh, it's all about maintaining and improving upon the campaigns that you have. Commitment officially Google recommends one to two hours per month. Uh, you know, we, we think that's a little low. I mean, at uh, one to two hours a month, you can probably get by. But if you really want to succeed, you really want to maximize the $10,000 per month, you're probably going to have to spend more time, especially earlier on. Like Charles was saying before, the timeline is indefinite. As long as you're running the, the, your grant actively, you're doing a good job, then they won't revoke it. So, some tips that we can give you. First is, is kind of um, like a philosophical approach to how you're going to deal with this account. And um, the focus, your, your focus should be on building your campaign as opposed to optimizing this. And, and let me explain because what I'm about to say is going to be contrary to what you typically hear when, when, or read about when you look online for for-profit pay-per-click advertising campaigns. And the reason, here's the reason. This chart, I'm just going to look at like a typical AdWords campaign that a for-profit company would run. And on the right side, uh, Google Grants campaign. So for AdWords, your goal typically is you're trying to stay within the budget and you're trying to maximize your return on investment. It's typical. If you're a for-profit company, these are very important things, right? How you do it? Well, you focus on building up, among other things, CTR, which stands for your click-through rate. Uh, that, that basically is a measure of how many people are clicking on your ad compared to how many people have seen your ad. So for example, if you have a 1% CTR, it means one in every 100 people who see your ad have clicked on it. Uh, so in order to maximize that, a lot of times the strategy is about optimizing the campaign. So it's a little different for Google Grants because this is not your own money that you're spending. This is, this is grant money that's given to you, so you're really you're trying to spend as much money as you can. How do you do that? Well, to some extent, CTR is important, but it's really your end goal is always you want to get as many clicks as possible, and you do that by building up your campaign. So with that in mind, because it's going to be a recurrent theme as I talk about other tips, I'm just going to show you some ways that you can build your campaign. The first is a specific setting that you can use. It's called an accelerated delivery method. Uh, the best way to explain this to actually show you how it's done. So inside a, a campaign, I'm going to go to Education System Awareness and I'm going to go into the settings. And kind of like halfway down the page, there's a box called Delivery Method. So if I open that up, you'll see that the default is set to standard, meaning that it's going to try and show your ads evenly over time. So it's, it's managing your budget so that you're not um, spending all of it in the morning, and so your ads aren't showing in the afternoon. This, you know, this makes a lot of sense if you're talking about for-profit, but again, for charities, you're trying to spend as much money as you can. So if you actually click Edit and hit Accelerate it, that's going to help you just you know, um, show a little bit more of those ads early on, and this is going to help you spend more. Uh, another way that you can help build the campaign is um, your bid strategy. So if you talk about for-profit campaigns, you know a lot of times people are thinking about uh, trying to be very strategic about whether they're bidding for each keyword. It's quite simple when you're talking about AdWords, or, I'm sorry, when you're talking about Google Grants because you should always just try and bid the maximum that you can. And so for Google Grants, the maximum is a dollar. So always try and bid one dollar for, for your keywords. If you ever reach the point where you're using $10,000 per month, that's when you can be a little bit more discerning about what you're bidding. 
but especially if you're starting out, just bid the max. So what else can you do? Well, go as broad as possible with your keywords. Um, you do this by using a lot of broad match keywords as opposed to the other match types, which are phrase match and exact match. And um, just in the interest of time, I'm not really going to explain what those kind of keywords are. Just know that broad match keywords, they, um, they're the least focused keywords, but they generate the most traffic. And so, you know, you're focusing on building campaigns, so go and use the broad match keywords. Uh, a great way to build upon that is to refer to what's called a search terms report. And let me just show you where you're going to find that. It's going to be inside your keywords tab. And if you go down a little bit, there's this box that says see search terms. And you click on it and you select all. Um, there's nothing here because this was just a sample campaign that I built. But what you would typically see is the actual search terms people are using that are activating your ad. And so by using broad match, you, you're going to generate a lot of ideas out of this. And these, again, are more keyword ideas that you can plug into your account. Uh, finally, um, you know, if you do a little bit of research onto this, you'll see the difference between short-tailed and long-tailed keywords. Typically, people recommend using the long-tailed keywords. And what I mean by long-tailed, it just means like um, your keywords have uh, you're using a phrase with many words in it. So um, like uh, three or four words might be considered a long-tail keyword, and a short-tail would be like one to two words. Um, so basically, why people like using long-tail is because while it gives you less traffic, it's more focused traffic. Going back to you know the philosophy of a grants campaign, it's about building up as much traffic as you can. So remember that it's okay to use the short-tail keywords as well. Uh, finally, a good tip is to tweak your ad text constantly. And this is good because it's a very time effective way to improve your campaign. And you always want to try and experiment with the text that resonates with the audience. Now a good way to engage audience is use something called a dynamic keyword. Uh, basically what's shown here, this is actually how you would you would uh, write in a dynamic keyword <clears throat> and you insert this into your ad text. And so how does, it, how does that work? Okay, here is a, a real example ad and you can see the dynamic keyword that's inserted into the, to the title. Uh, and what happens is Google will actually try to insert what people are searching inside that dynamic keyword. So let's take an example. Um, let's say you know you're searching for blind sports, and looking at the ad that, that I've shown, what they'll see is in place of those brackets the search query that the person has entered. So it'll say exciting blind sports, and then the ad text below that. Now, if you look inside the the brackets, there's actually I've written there at the top blind activities, and what that all that means is. Um, in case they can't insert the search query, so let's say it's too long, they'll go with the default of what you set there. And so this is just a really good way to, to engage audiences because it kind of tailors every ad to what exactly the person is searching. So to give you an example uh, to show you that this actually works, um, here's a campaign that, uh, that we did for uh, a blind hockey organization. This is an ad that I had initially written, and it had a 0.63% click-through rate, which is, you know, it's not great. Uh, I wasn't happy with it. I maybe spent a maximum of five minutes trying to think about some other ad text ideas. So I came up with this one. I, I want to use the dynamic keyword just to be more engaging, and as a result, the click-through rate went up to 2.37%. Now. I know this is only a difference of 1.74%. It may not seem like a lot, but when you look at it over thousands of impressions a month, the actual difference that this made was 140 visitors per month. So if you think about that, 
you know, five minutes of work translates into another 140 visitors a month, that's a pretty good return on your time. And if you can imagine doing this across all your campaigns, it can, uh, the improvements can really add up. So that's the end of our, of our presentation. Um, hopefully you understand more about pay-per-click advertising, how it applies to charities, and then the whole grant process, and uh, some, some tips and strategies on how to best go across it. Here are just some additional resources that you can use. Uh, the first is the Google Grant Help Center. Um, and this is just like a basic an FAQ section for Google Grants. The second is the Google Grant Help Forum, and it's basically um, it's like a community-driven area. People can ask questions. You can ask your own questions, and hopefully someone will answer it. There's the AdWords Learning Center, which is um, more about the uh, the pay-per-click advertising on the for-profit side, but a lot of those lessons can still apply to running a, a grants campaign. And finally, our website, Connect Ad, you can always contact us or find about us or visit our website online. Thanks. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask and we'll try to get to it as soon as possible. Tierney, do you want the uh, mic back? Sure. Um, so. Yeah, so Simon and Charles do have uh, another minute if you want to ask any questions. And I also do recommend, um, as I mentioned, go do go to their website and check them out. Um, if this is something that you're interested in pursuing, they are a great resource and having someone around to help you manage the grant can really be an asset to make sure you stay on top of it and it doesn't kind of get buried among your many other things. So. I definitely recommend you check that out. Um, keep putting in your questions. And the one more thing that I have to say is that we do have a survey, uh, which is how we get information back from you about the webinars, how it went, and it helps us to improve future webinars. So if you, I'm sending you the link in the chat right now, and it will be in our email after the webinar. If you take two minutes is all it takes to fill it out. Actually, probably 30 seconds. That's an overestimate. So. If you could do that, that would be fantastic. Um, so I noticed we have a couple of questions for Simon. Um, so Simon, why don't you um, share your thoughts on that? Uh, thanks, Tierney. Um, the, the first question I want to answer, just because it's this is a really critical question that that um, Taryn asked: What happens if, when your organization goes over the 10k per month budget? Does the organization pay Google directly, or will the budget be bumped up to 40k immediately? So, that's a great question. Um, basically, what happens is, if you reach that $10,000 a month budget, your account will stop showing ads. You will not have to pay anything to Google. There's, there's no money being exchanged because you're not even providing your billing information to Google. So, just know that none of the there's no cost coming out of your pocket if you hit that limit. It just, your campaign will stop for that month until the next month when you get the next $10,000. Um, to address the second part, your budget doesn't automatically uh, hit the $40,000 mark. Um, what happens there is, if you can show Google that you consistently reach $10,000 for, I think it's like three consecutive months, um, then you can you actually have to fill out another application to get it bumped up, but um, you know. But I have to say, like uh, ten thousand dollars per month, that's it's a challenging goal to reach. So if you're there, you know, I think you're already getting great value, and uh, getting more money beyond that is just a huge bonus for you. <clears throat> okay, so um, I mean, it looks like a lot of these questions are answered. Uh, there's another one. Does your company give consultation to nonprofit charity using Google Ads? Um, Ganimi, could you please? Sorry, I'm trying to think. Like, um, so you're saying not uh, not Google Grants, but are you talking about more like display advertising or like for-profit advertising, or like the using AdWords? I'll wait for you to respond to that, uh, just to see what other questions there are. Uh, 
Um, here's one from Adam Smith that Charles wanted to double check. If applicants choose to pay to advertise with Google AdWords while in the approval process, are they reimbursed when approved? No, you're not reimbursed. Um, basically, as soon as you advertise in AdWords, you're just paying for it. Um, grants, the whole grants thing is entirely separate. Because are I see. Okay, so um, it's probably something a question that uh, it's best that we talk about uh, like privately. I just don't want to um, kind of mix in with all the other questions that people might ask. But uh, maybe Charles can uh, speak with you separately while I see if I can field some other questions. Um, does anyone have any last questions before we wrap things up? Um, okay, I'm not seeing anything more, so um, please, though, um, you're welcome to connect TechSoup or connect with Connect Ad if you're interested in learning more. Um, and thank you very much for attending today. Please do fill out our survey. And as I mentioned, we will be sending you um, the, the link with the recording and everything else uh, after this webinar. Um, give it an hour or so, but um, that should be coming to your inbox. Oh, and we have one more question before we go. Simon, okay. do you want to grab that? Um, yes. So that means it would be like if you do sign up for Google Ads and get approved, you become eligible for 10k grant from Google. Um, not exactly. I mean, these are we're we're kind of talking about two different things here. So um, so Google Ads, that's like the um, for-profit side of what Google Grants is. Um, it's open to anybody to use. Uh, and what you're doing is you're paying, you know, your own money to to fund these advertisements. Whereas Google Grants is something that's, it's just money, that, it's credits that are given to you from Google. Um, so if you do sign up for Google Ads, it's going to be, you know, your own initiative. But if you want a Google Grant, then you have to do a separate application uh, in order to become approved for the $10,000 per month. Great. Thank Welcome. you very much, everybody. And thank you to our presenters, Simon and Charles, for doing a fantastic job of walking us through Google Grants. Um, and have a great afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Bye.